The origins of Quaker Earth Care Witness date back to 1985 when Marshall Massey, a friend from Colorado, challenged friends at the Pacific Yearly Meeting to address environmental concerns as part of our faith commitment to serve as witnesses for peace. When Massey spoke again at the Friends General Conference gathering in 1987, his call for greater environmental accountability on the part of Friends was with the intention to awaken Friends to the deep understanding that God's creation is to be held in reverence in its own right, and that human aspirations for peace and justice depend upon restoring the Earth's ecological integrity. So today is um, the 30th anniversary of the beginning of this organization, and some of the people who were there at the formation talked about what it was like, the excitement of that week. And I'm struck by the fact that Quaker Earth Care Witness was founded out of a prophetic ministry about how we as Quakers needed to embrace the earth and care for the earth. And so what I'm seeing looking at this history is there's is this initial prophetic message and many of us have been, it, it's like the process of nurturing that message is more eldering, it's more discussion and deepening of listening and supporting each other in the changes in, in our lives. I think the most valuable part of Q that I enjoy is the first night when we share our stories. When we get to hear those deep connections that people are having, those deep troubles, those deep joys, and really get to share what what is on our minds as we come to the meeting. There's wonderful stories here. And what Q has done, Quaker Earth Care Witness has done, is to bring that awareness to the society, religious society of friends. And it's also brought, is also bringing that awareness to the rest of the world through our work in the United Nations, through our work in the Organization of American States, uh, through our work uh, with other faith-based organizations. So it's a place to bring, you know, our deepest aspirations, um, our deepest passions, and our deepest feelings, and to really celebrate together and grieve together and find way forward together and to be faithful together. I have had a concern about population for many years and uh, had a traveling minute from my monthly meeting and also from the quarterly and yearly meeting. But population is a concern that is much larger than the monthly or yearly meeting. 
and I brought the concern to Friends Command into the nature, and um, they were supportive, uh, which is unusual because many environmental groups have stayed away from uh, population concerns. And that's been a really interesting experience to kind of move from a, I think a, a small understanding of environmentalism to a larger understanding of earth care, which has led me to really kind of change how I think about doing this work. I like to come to QEW meetings because other, there are other people here who get it. it. Empowers me and energizes me to do things that are constructive in my community at home. And I feel like I'll be able to talk about it when I get back here and I'll be able to relate. I have enough support to help move environmental issues forward. I think one of the things that's most valuable for me is the um, fellowship with people that have traveled this road for a long time. And there's a lot of wisdom here and a lot of heart. There are people that I really honor and treasure and who give me hope and companionship in this work. I feel that this is where my life has been leading me, that there are a number of lived experiences and education and, and spiritual have brought me to this place, and it's a good place to be. As a person of color and a woman, to have that many portal uh, entrance to say, this is where I'm speaking from, there is the, uh, the social justice, the, the eco-justice, the climate justice, that voice um, that I can bring and should bring. I'm a landscape architect by training and have spent my whole career with the National Park Service and have worked on trying to foster environmental values for America. Um, and I found here was a way for me to take that spirit-led vocation and share it with my Quaker colleagues. So I'm what you call probably a newcomer to Quaker Earth Care Witness. And I came to my first meeting and was blown away by the weightiness of all the Quakers here. I'm like, oh my gosh, these people have been here for 20 years. They, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm just this tree hugger that wants to help somehow. Um, but I found out quickly that enthusiasm and um, just being involved and wanting to be involved, involved is important. And I see Quaker Earth Care Witness as the organization that can create materials about issues and pull people together so that it can be a vehicle to help monthly meetings and yearly meetings reach out. I think there's a lot of, of widening that we could do to say there's room for everybody and that's that's really what what the group's searching for and want. Is to, is to really embrace everyone who's been thinking and, and feeling and, and I think praying on these issues.
you describe your relationship with the natural world? My answer is I am the natural world. You are. We're all apart. And the disconnect feeling that we're not a part of is essentially one of the ways that people are then allowed to abuse it. I get a lot of people saying Thank you for bringing your kids. We're doing this for kids. We're doing this for the next generations. And, um, and that's, that's really awesome. That's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm still here. One of the great strengths of Charlotte Friends, where I'm attending now, is that that is a meeting that treasures its children. And I think to myself, a lot of those children were born around 2010. And what will the world be like in 2040? And those are the days when I just want to stand up and yell at my meeting. It's like, guys, don't you get it? Don't you tell me you love those children. If we're not going to work to have the earth be beautiful for them too, I've learned with the help of the QEW community about grief as a tool, that, that grief is a place we have to start in, and that allowing that energy to flow and allowing those feelings to be felt with the support of a community is, is the starting place to, to any type of, of real meaningful work. almost 400 years now, when there have been times of, of, of struggle and challenge in the world, Quakers have witnessed and have accompanied the people. Doing unto others as you'd like to do is the message of why Christians and Quaker Christians, who have a history of being activist Christians, should be particularly interested in climate justice issues. We've gone all over the world uh, as friends talking about our relationship, our love of the mother, our, the nurturing aspect, what I call the numinous, which is the presence of spirit in nature. The connection is something that I think as friends, we, we feel when we understand that there's that of God in everyone. And what we're trying to do is to spread that sense that, that there is that of God in everything.
So the big questions to me are still really scary ones, you know, the realities of, of, of climate disruption. But I'm grounded in the fact that all we can do is be faithful and I think put our energies together to, to try to do something now. A man in my Earth Care Committee said, the greatest tragedy we are facing is climate change, second only to the consciousness that has created it. My feeling is that in these troubled times, there are a lot of young people who feel really despairing that somehow our generations have destroyed their future. And they kind of are in a lonely hopefulness. So we're not free in a moral or ethical sense to just do nothing. And it's life is a is choice. And if you don't choose, you, you, you've chosen. And as Elizabeth Watson said, there's no peace without a planet. There's no justice without a planet. They are all interrelated and to find the place where each of us fit in that and to for friends to really pay attention to the still small voice that I can't imagine that the spirit isn't wanting all of us to do everything we possibly can and to be in discernment about how we're being called to act on behalf of Earth. just sit and um, be silent and uh, see the light in their, in their inner soul, but it has to really be shared and translated into movement and, and action to save our earth, to make it better for everybody so that our great-great-grandchildren uh, will have a good place to, to call home. In my experience, friends my age, the, the young adult friends that I've met across the country are really spiritually grounded. And, and I want to combine that energy with the experience and knowledge that the, the older generation of friends has and make sure we don't lose that. Quakers, we're the group that, that has this calling. How do we bring our process and amplify that as the world is reaching out to this? It's, uh, friends have a beautiful process. We need to present that um, and let people not go into despair, but in showing people things they can do. And QEW is excellent at that. Quakers can provide a spiritual home, a spiritual community where they can both see what's going on, be supported in activism, and get through that connection, be connection in the in hope that faith brings. If you, if, you, if you can find a way to move that, that real connection, that love with others,
that love of that bird is shifting a little. You're going to make right choices. So I would like us to not only look to sustainability, but to how we can regenerate the earth. So we waste less food. We disrupt the water cycle. But we plant trees rather than cut down trees. And we are more conscious the wonder around us. And so the question is, what can we offer as friends in the spiritual realm to help people figure out what to do now? The earth is alive. And it is, it is my oldest living ancestor. And it's still alive. And will be alive long after I'm gone. And that is what I call eternity. And that is the eternity that we have that gives us a sense of immortality.